Want to know why 80% of people fail when trying to break into tech? They're literally making a critical mistake that's putting their brain into survival mode instead of learning mode. So stay tuned in this video because I'm going to tell you what science says about when it is the worst time to start your tech career and more importantly, when and how to start it. Let's go. Hey, cyberheroes, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Boyd Clewis, internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, author, and speaker. And today we're going to be diving into a career mistake that's killing dreams faster than the people that took advantage of the Chase Infinite Money glitch. I'm pretty sure it was cool while it lasted, but hey. So go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel because this insight in this video is going to save your career before it starts and if you're struggling it is going to break down why also cyber heroes don't forget to check out some of the amazing resources we have in the video description that are guaranteed to help transform your career so here's a situation that i see all the time monday lost job tuesday online googling how to get into cybersecurity, how to program how to get into networking, something of that nature. By Wednesday, we found a Udemy course or a YouTube video series, and we've consumed every bit of it. Then here comes Friday. We are completely burnt out and overwhelmed and don't know what we were doing in the first place. Does that sound like you? Let me know in the comments. Now, again, I'm not trying to make fun or light of the situation. I just understand because I've been there and I've seen thousands of people go through the same situation. So let's look at the scientific reason behind this, because one of the things that I wholeheartedly believe is I have this thing that I teach my clients is called the unicorn theory, meaning unicorns do not exist. If you are facing a problem or a challenge, I can guarantee you someone else is or has faced that same challenge and they are, and they are either going through it or they have already overcome it so that means that there is an opportunity for us to improve so what happens is when you are in this position especially after losing a job what happens is your brain and your body starts producing this hormone in your system that is called cortisol cortisol is released when you are stressed so think about this why are you trying to do this new training anyway it's so you can get a job so you are already naturally stressed because you need a job you have future expenses that are coming and this right here y'all is where things start to go downhill let me know in the comments if this sounds familiar like you were great in school but now that you are in this situation, it feels like you can't learn. Let me know, let me know. With this cortisol being released in your body, your body is in now called fight or flight, fight or flight. So if you've ever been in a situation where maybe um, some event broke out, maybe you're in a car accident or some situation where you felt the adrenaline pumping, your senses were heightened, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, whether you realize it or not, when you are in a high emotional state or stress situation, your body is releasing those same chemicals into your bloodstream and everything, and it makes it very, very difficult to learn. So the reason why you are struggling is because your brain has now put you into survival mode, which has turned off its natural optimal state of learning mode. So what happens is brain activity is actually shifted toward giving you the necessary tools and energy to survive and not learn. So you are actually fighting your human nature when you are in this position. So what happens is learning becomes extremely difficult. Remembering things becomes extremely difficult because that is not priority for you to survive. And your mind knows this. No matter how much we try to trick our mind, our mind knows. And the mind controls everything. And this is why I spend so much time working on mindset with my clients because it doesn't matter what is going on in the world your mind creates your reality and if you are in this fight or flight stance this space is going to be extremely difficult to achieve something positive because your brain is not looking for that it is just trying to survive so what am i really saying when you are in this this fight or flight state your brain capacity your learning ability drops harder than crypto prices in like 2022 right it drops significantly Serious question for you. Would you try to juggle if you were being chased by a bear? <laughs> you don't even have to answer that. Of course not. 
Absolutely, of course not. But why would you? It's not a critical function or task. You are more concerned about that bear trying to eat you than you are actually juggling. But believe it or not, this is exactly what it looks like when you are stressed about bills, finances, life, when trying to learn new complex skills. It is literally like juggling and trying to run from the bear. You and your mind is going to be focused on preserving your life, not learning new functions. And what are the results of this? This is why I see clients jumping from course to course to course, because they find problems with the creator of the course, not recognizing the problem is between those two ears. We're also seeing overwhelmed by basic concepts and having to constantly repeat, repeat, repeat what they're learning until they get to the next phase, which is so overwhelmed that they absolutely quit. They just flat out quit. And then it turns into this blame cycle of not being tech savvy enough, not having the right training, not having the right mentorship, when it doesn't matter how good the coaching is, how good the program is, you are not in the optimal state to receive what is being given to you. Guys, I'm trying to tell y'all from experience, not just my experience, but working with thousands of clients. If you are if you are not personally optimized with the things that are going on in your life, the worst investment that you can make is into especially an expensive training academy. That is the worst investment that you can make because your mind and body are not ready to actually step up to that level to get things done. Now is a good time for you to go ahead and hit that like button on this video and subscribe to the channel because now we are going to get into what you should do to take your tech career to the next level. So here's what you have to understand y'all. In my career, I was able to progress from non-IT, non-tech into tech, into system administration, into architecture, into security consulting, all because of one thing. I was not reactive, I was proactive with what I wanted to do. Every progressive, uh, place that I took in my career was by design and intentional. This is what I'm telling you. The reason why you are stressed out and overwhelmed is because you don't have a plan. Anxiety actually comes from being unprepared and not having a plan that you have confidence in. What, what most people do, again, is they start trying to do training when they need to get a job, especially in the tech space. That is the total wrong approach. Technology is always changing and evolving, and especially risk in the cybersecurity space. So if you want to be successful long-term in tech, especially cybersecurity, cybersecurity, you have to constantly be improving your craft in training. So the training doesn't start when I want to get a job. The training starts because you want to be in the industry and you want to stay there. What I tell my clients is this, and I hope this clicks if you're watching right now. If you want to land a job in cybersecurity, you have to become a cybersecurity professional. But the problem is, especially for you people on here watching on YouTube, by the way, I love all my fans. So here's the challenge. You have been conditioned to believe that you need to get a job to get experience as a cybersecurity professional. And that is 100% incorrect. Your experience is only limited by your creativity. Now, again, I tell my clients, you need to become a cybersecurity professional to get hired as a cybersecurity professional. There are several projects and things. I could give you 50 projects right now that you could do that will completely transform your experience because you have to have talking points to have in a job interview in order to land the job because companies are hiring you based on what you did before. They are not hiring you based on where you worked. You have to understand that you can separate a job from your experience because the experience is yours, but it is very difficult to grasp these concepts and do these things when you are in survival mode. So my recommendation number two is you need to make developing your craft a daily occurrence. We don't train once a week. 
you have to be obsessive about this. Just give it 30 to 60 minutes a day. If you can do that, you will completely transform your life. I've done this for years. Even as a seasoned cybersecurity professional, I study and stay up to date on what's happening in the industry every day, every week. So when companies call me because they need a consult, I am ready. I don't need to study and prepare for an interview because it is a part of me. As a minister and preacher of the, the, um, the Christian gospel, I don't need to study when it's time for me to teach a sermon on Sundays because I am studying and in the word every single day. So when the time comes, boom, I'm ready. As a golf professional, <laughs> okay, as a high handicap newbie, I practice every day and every week so that when I go play with my buddies, if you're watching this, Mike, I'm coming for you, boy. Jay, you too, I'm coming for you. I work on my craft. You have to become obsessive about improving you. And most people lose heart and, and they completely lose heart on what's important because they're so results driven. And when it comes to this daily focus, do not do theoretical things. Theoretical teaching and things only works in theory. If you stay up to date on what's happening in the news, Oftentimes, what I like to do is when I'm reading a news source about maybe a hack or attack that happened, I will read what happened and then I will actually write out a security control or a mitigating control that I could have used to address that. That right there, especially if you are looking for a job right now, that is cybersecurity research. Golden nugget right there. If you want to close an employment gap, just update your resume as cybersecurity researcher and do the research right now do it you can speak to how you evaluated threats how you um wrote out mitigating controls and like there's a whole way that you can do this so you don't have to be confined or be concerned about employment gaps when you take control of your career and here's step three for you you have to build the roadmap there's entirely too many people that want to get into tech or cybersecurity, but that is like saying hey i'm in new york and i want to go live in texas Texas is bigger than most countries. Where are you going to go in Texas? Like I live in Dallas right now. If I wanted to drive out west, it would take me 10 hours along just to drive outside of Texas. So where are you going? You need to identify that specific role that lines up with your natural skills, talents, and abilities and create a chart roadmap to get you there. Oftentimes, if you find roles that actually line up with your skills and ability, you may see that you already have transferable skills that you can leverage instead of going out and trying to learn something completely new while you are in this state. Because the thing is, if you do this right, make this transition, you can get paid to learn all of the complex technologies and all that good stuff. Just learn what, what your natural skills are line into because in cybersecurity there are tons of roles that don't require technical hands-on keyboard things there's technical writers there's auditors there's managers there's business analysts there's project managers program managers there are so many things that you can do but you have to be very clear and specific and if you don't know then you need to find a mentor or get involved in a community that can help you iron that out because trying to do this on your own is going to be extremely difficult. Not saying that you can't get there, but the the timeline to actually accomplish your goal is going to be significantly expanded if you don't have a community and more and mentorship to actually support you getting there. And that is the power of mentorship. When you get in a community and you build your network, you will see that opportunities will start coming to you. Because the fact is, People hire people, not robots. So sitting on the computer applying to jobs day after day after day is not the best thing to do in my opinion. When you take that same time and energy, focus on developing your skill set and your network, you can have conversations with people that are actually hiring and they can move you into those roles. I have never applied for any of the jobs that have paid me more than $150,000 in my career. Never have because the personal branding, the skills, and the network has brought me opportunities consistently. So a quick practical tip, go to indeed.com, go to linkedin.com, dice.com, and just type in a few of the skills that you have in the job space, in the, the search bracket. 
Okay, so I would actually lean more heavily on Dice.com because it's more tech jobs, right? Because we're talking about breaking into tech. Don't put a geographic location or anything in there. Just go through and look at five to 10 jobs and just look at the day-to-day -day responsibilities. See if you see any commonalities behind what you do now in your current role or in your previous role, because then you may be able to modify your resume and experience so that it lines up with those new opportunities. And then you can also examine what that job title is and see if there are more opportunities out there like that. So you can actually build a roadmap specifically targeted for that role. Now, that is the best way to grow a career because you're gonna be specifically targeted to a specific role and maybe even a specific industry leveraging the skills that you already have. That is the sauce right there. So do this guys, drop a comment right here. Let me know what your job status is and how are you approaching this whole learning transition, career transition? Are you preparing from a place of survival mode? Are you in a good place knowing exactly where you're going? Let me know, I might be able to offer you some insight on your situation. And if you do want a career, a complete tech career roadmap that could potentially lead you to a six figure and beyond cybersecurity career, then I invite you to join my Cyber Hero School. Link is in the description. You will get inside of Cyber Hero School, you get everything that I've learned from going from zero to making a million dollars a year as a cybersecurity consultant with no college degree whatsoever, as well as a community of supporters click the link. You get seven days risk-free. Try it out. If you love it, stay with us. If not, hey, no questions asked, money back. Hey, Cyber Hero. So I'm going to leave you with this. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. So take advantage of the resources and opportunities that you have to grow your career. Be intentional about it. And you definitely want to check out this video right here if you're looking for skills and how to break into tech. Let's go.